All right, now we're going to look at the chassis assemblage on this. So we have a few parts. Um, we have this, which is your main part to attach it to just about anything you can think of. Uh, for me, it's going to be the part I'm going to use to attach to the Arduino bookcase later on. But you can attach it to Maker Beam or whatever platform you want. Uh, we have the main chassis. And this is where the servo motor goes in. So you take your servo motor, just like that. You can fit this into place. Slide your servo motor in there and push it into position, just like that. Okay. And then you could take your PLA spikes to uh, tag that into position. So you can go like this. You have to use the M3s for these. Just like that. And depending on how you want to do it, uh, for me, you know, I kind of go th through the back and up through the front and then tag the top. It's a bit much there. Perfect. And make sure you get this nice and tight in here. And you take your soldering iron. Kind of rivet that top. Careful not to touch the servo. And there we go. Let's see if I can get that into camera. Jeez. See that little dot right there? Perfect and it's soldered onto the back too. Cool. So you do that four times. Then you have that into position. Again, no M3 screws involved. I'm going to move this camera so it's easier to position things. There we go. Perfect. Okay, after you get that, um, we have this little plate, and that goes something like this. And you're going to put a PLA spike in the front of it. Can I try to put the PLA spike, the newly made rivet at the top? Because the newly made rivet's always better than the one that you press with the soldering iron. Just like that. There we go. Good. Now you have this little piece right here. It's kind of like um, an F. And it's going to go, and there's two of them. So the one you need is the one that goes on this side. So the long edge goes that way. So it kind of goes like that. Okay, then you line up your hole, and sometimes you'll get this where the motor is just a slight bit more down than it needs to be on some on some servos. In that case, what I usually do 
because I had a couple servos like that already. As you go like this, and you trim just a little bit of the corner, just a smidge off the corner to round it off. And it fits quite nicely. Perfect. Now, in some cases, you're going to have to clear that hole. Um, I use an eighth inch drill bit. I think that's what this is. Yep, eighth inch. So, if you get the kit, you know, just make sure these holes are cleared out. I try to use sizes, like the three mil is actually really perfect because uh, you can get a three millimeter drill and it works quite well. Or you can get an eighth inch drill and it works rather well. So it's kind of universal to uh, wherever you are in the world. Perfect. Okay. PLA spike time. Do, 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 do. In this fun. Slide that in. Go like that. There we go. PLA spike is now in position. Okay, now you're going to need glue. And you're going to need, need that 2 millimeter um, drill bit. So there's a little hole right here. Just take your 2 mil drill and drill it all the way through as far as you can get in. Perfect. Okay, do that with all these pieces. Just make sure they're all cleared out. Perfect. Now, take a piece of PLA, thread it on there. That's going to go right here, just like that. So what you're going to have to do, and I only get one shot at this, so even if I screw up this video, I'm going to have to just keep continuing to go. Um, I'm going to put some a slab of super glue here. You have to super glue this part on. So I put super glue right there, and I have to align the holes. Again, you don't want to hold this into the PLA into position too long because you don't want to take and um, accidentally super glue the PLA into position. So once you get it, just go like that, slide it out gently, and let it dry. Again, you could sand both sides of that. It would make it a little sturdier, but really it doesn't need to be all that sturdy because um, there's going to be a screw that goes into position anyway in that area. So that those two together give you enough space to be able to um, thread an M3 in there. Okay, so while that's drying, we look at this little disc. This little disc, just hit it with a tap. It doesn't matter what size tap. Just I use an M3, but you could uh, use something just to get some thread started there. And then you're going to take a 25 millimeter M3 